Thank you so much for all the support you gave me, guys. Okay. Today, I got promoted. Those who spread goodness radiate happiness to everyone around them. Introducing LOLC Finance Credit Cards. Fuel the goodness in you. Welcome to Living Gets Real. I'm Ashwini Vedakan. Joining us on this week's episode, we have Arjun Kumar Swami. But before we get into it, here's a little sneak peek into his life. So Arjun, it's good to have you here with us. Thank you. Good to be here. Welcome back to Sri Lanka too. Thank you very much. Good to be back. <laughs> so Arjun, um, you describe yourself as a fusion artist. Could you yes. elaborate on what you mean by that? Right. So I think my my kind of sound is a mixture of East and West. So it's kind of like a mixture of um, mainly I'd say Hindi and uh, and English, but I've also dabbled with Tamil, with Punjabi, Sinhala recently. Yes. So it's always kind of this fusion of, of two of two sounds. I like kind of I guess mainly kind of English R&B and pop music. So you think about like Justin Bieber or Drake mixed with Bollywood. That's kind of like the main formula for me. Okay. Now the UK has a number of brown artists coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how would you describe <coughs> the scope of talent found there, especially when it comes to being a Sri Lankan born artist? I think it's quite a kind of a unique thing being, I guess, a British Asian. Uh, you have this kind of you're part of the diaspora as it were. So people from yeah. UK, Canada, America. It's kind of a different experience to being obviously from in Sri Lanka or India. We have this kind of Western culture. We have our obviously parents who give us our Eastern roots, but our friends are obviously English and black and Chinese and whatever. So we have this kind of very multi-ethnic kind of upbringing. I think, I think that British Asian identity is quite unique to us. As, as artists, we kind of have that sound which brings in the kind of Western flavor, but obviously has, it, has its roots in, in the East. So I think that's kind of how I describe it. Uh, the British Asian scene is very different actually to the, I'd say, the, the Bollywood industry. There's like quite a few different industries that I'm kind of part of. There's, there's like the kind of full Hindi Bollywood industry, there's the Kollywood, which is South Indian, Tamil film industry, and there's obviously Sri Lanka has its own industry. But I think in the UK, it kind of all blends into one. So there's Tamil artists, Punjabi, Bengali, they all kind of collaborate. Melting pot. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And like you said, you, you dabbled in different languages. <coughs> is there one that you feel comfortable working with? English. <laughs> I'd say number one is uh, English for me. But I, I think I've obviously grown up listening to a lot of R&B and pop music and, and jazz and soul. My mum was actually much more into Western music than into Eastern music. So I think I got into Bollywood and Hindi music more through my friends and like ex-girlfriends and like the people I was around were into Bollywood. So I had a lot of you know friends were Indian, Gujarati, Punjabi, Bengali, Pakistani. So a lot of Indian um, or Asian influence. But I was always more into English, and I think I prefer to sing in English. But I tend to collaborate with you know big big artists from from the Punjabi artists like Guru Randhawa. I did a song called Suit, which is a big big smash in India. Uh, to work with like Hollywood, like South Indian film composers like Anirudh, you know, whose collaboration was his was his was his song. Um, and then obviously Western artists like rappers and singers from from the UK. So I think there's there's always been this kind of a, I guess ex experimentation. I've tried different different sounds and, and different different styles. Yeah. Now your genre fo like, tends to focus around, like you said, R and B, soul, pop. Mm -hmm. um, is there a specific artist that you've looked up to when it comes to your compositions? Mm. I say um, Michael Jackson. Every single R and B singer would say Michael Jackson is probably the, the, the kind of holy grail. Yeah. There's been people like Usher, um, Craig David in the UK. Have you heard of Craig David? Do you know Craig David? Yes, I do. Craig David <laughs> is like a big UK R and B kind of inspiration. I think because I began on the guitar, so I think my, my kind of sound evolved from the guitar and that was very like Craig David was the guy who brought I guess the guitar into R&B a lot um, and then more recently people like yeah people like Drake, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber you name it yeah. Jay-Z, Kanye West. <laughs> so now you also write and compose your own music or produce it. Yes sense. yeah. So um, where does your where do you draw inspiration from? So I you know travel I think you know having I've been fortunate enough to kind of tour the world like every continent so when you travel 
you kind of soak up different cultures, you, you, you experience what it's like to live in Malaysia or Dubai or Canada, you kind of experience that, the different sounds that exist in these different places and I kind of incorporate you know, that into my music. I think that's one thing. Um, obviously being around other artists, having worked with other artists from different parts of the world who sing different languages to me, I obviously learn from them how to sing Hindi better, how to sing, well, I don't sing Tamil very often, but Tamil better or whatever it might be. I, I tend to you know, learn from other artists who I collaborate with. Um, but yeah, I think my mum is my, probably my biggest in, inspiration. She's the one who kind of got me into music in the first place. I think she's where I draw a lot of my inspiration from. Now you also released um, the official lyric video to your song, Spring It Up. Yep. Good months. knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about the song? How did that come about? So Spring It Up actually is um, it's about a guy who keeps messing up in a relationship. So he keeps trying to, trying to be a good boyfriend, but he just keeps screwing it up basically. So that's the kind of... Kind of like a relatable song to a lot of guys who try the hardest or, or they don't sometimes and then they forget their girlfriend's birthday or they forget Valentine's Day or yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> Anniversaries, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like a, it's an anthem for people who keep, you know, messing up in their relationship. So it's not, a, not necessarily a true story. I mean, it can be, I have had one or two of these experiences in the past, but yeah, it's, it's actually, it was actually done uh, in, in, for a brand, actually. It was a kind of a brand collaboration we, we did with a brand in the UK. So that was, um, yeah, that's probably the most recent song I've released, so yeah. Yeah. So now you have a huge following, mm. right? Um, do you find it hard to balance your personal life and what you want to share, especially <laughs> considering your yeah. name, where you mm. It's a challenge. I think, you know, as, as an artist, it's, it's very hard because I think you have to, people want to know everything about you, what you eat for breakfast, what you're interested in, which sports you watch, you know, what, what, what you do on the weekend. So that, that's kind of a, this current kind of youth culture is people want to know everything about you, but it can be a little bit draining to have to always be posting everything you do on, on Instagram and can be quite taxing but I think I, I try and balance it where I have time, times where I just don't have any Instagram inter I just kind of tell it off for like, a, for like a day or two kind of reset have a bit of a detox and kind of you know but I, obviously it is you know kind of whole engagement with fans is, 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 is very important I think now when I first began it was like YouTube and Facebook and MySpace and it became Instagram now it's TikTok that keeps evolving so I think having to kind of um, Having to kind of evolve with the times, yourself. exactly. Yeah. Rebrand, we you know keep keep changing your you know things about yourself. I think that's important as well. Mm -hmm. So now you are also signed with mm -hmm. various labels, mm -hmm. on Hollywood movies. Yeah, yeah. And have you had a look at the local music scene? Yes, that, that's that's why I'm here partly. I mean, obviously, I've, I've been to Sri Lanka a lot, but I've not actually explored that much in Sri Lanka in terms of you know collaborations. I've done a couple of songs. Uh, over the years, I, I did a, a, the World T20 theme song, um, so like eight, nine years ago, a long time ago. I did, did some songs for the SLPL, the kind of the T20 tournament in Sri Lanka. Um, and I've always had an interest in the country, but I've never actually spent enough time to really investigate what's happening so much. But I, I, obviously, I've seen Yohani's recent song blew up massive in you know in India and, and UK as well. I think that's a big, big moment for kind of. Singular music. I've not seen a singular song go that global before. I think that obviously was a, a, a big, a big moment. I've been talking, talking to her as well, Johanny. We, we had, had, a, had a plan to do a show in the UK at one point together. Um, so yeah, kind of obviously while, while I'm here, the aim is to is to kind of explore collaborations with with um, with some local artists, yeah. some legends that we've actually been in talks with. I think the aim aim this year is to kind of ha have have more of a, a plan to kind of come into Sri Lanka, do a bit more, you know, kind of PR and stuff here and I guess make people aware that I'm actually Sri Lankan because I think people assume that I'm Indian, Indian because yeah. my name is Arjun and I sing like mainly Hindi music. I was signed with T-Series. I think everyone assumes people I meet here think I'm from India. Often people ask me like, how are you enjoying Sri Lanka? I'm like, I, I was born here, like I'm, I'm Sri Lankan. So I think the aim is to kind of raise awareness of that a bit more and do some collaborations with artists in, you know, in Singhala and Tamil and yeah, and just be here more. Excellent. Well, we mm. have reached the end of our burning questions. Thank we have you. a little game plan for you. Okay. But we'll get back into that after a little word from our sponsors. You love the feeling of being renewed. To protect the things most precious to you. To stay beautiful every single day. To breathe just like we do. Because you are truly delicate. Protecting the ones who've been with us through the years. 
with Sailac Care, the only wood coating that truly protects you. Sailac Wood Coatings from Jat. Welcome back as we continue our conversation with Arjun Kumar Swami and we have a little game planned. So the game we have for you is called Yes or No. Okay. Is, you have the little board. Mm -hmm. So yes, no. when I ask you a question, you mm -hmm. either hold yes or no. Got it? Got it. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you afraid of the dark? No. Okay. Are you afraid of small spaces? Mm, no, not really. Have you ever been lost in a mall? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. When I was a kid, yeah, I think so. Ever imagined yourself in a music award show in the shower? Say that again, sorry. Imagine myself uh, when I've been in the shower. In Have the... you ever imagined yourself in a music award show when yeah. you're in the shower? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've sung songs in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> written so I've, been, I've actually written some of my best songs in the shower. Yeah. I come out of the shower and I've forgotten the melody. Oh. I try and keep singing it and then it leaves my head often. Okay. Do yeah. you faint easily? No. Do you fall asleep easily? Yes. That's my number one problem is I fall asleep all the time. Okay. I fell asleep just now before the interview actually. <laughs> Are you afraid of heights? Yes. Did I, did, I did climb Sigiria to the top though. I left my whole family and I, I was the only one who went to the top. Because my family was scared. They stopped at the Lions Pool. So. <laughs> okay. Do you did you ever believe in the North Pole as a kid? I still believe. What do you mean? The, you mean what? There is a North Pole. No, as in my you mean Santa Claus? Yeah. Ah, okay, I mean, that's different to saying the, yeah, the North Pole. <laughs> no, I don't believe in Santa. Okay. Do you? No, no. okay, fine. <laughs> okay, right. Um, have you ever been in surgery? Mm, minor surgery, yes. I can't, I don't, yeah. Have you ever, or have you ever thrown up in public? Yes. <laughs> ever met your celebrity crush? <laughs> Uh, I have met one or two actually, yes. Yeah? Disha Patani, if you know who that is, Bollywood actress. Oh, okay. I, I happened to meet her, yeah. yeah how did you react when you said, did you find I got a selfie and then I freaked out after the yeah. <laughs> Kept it cool when, when I met her. Okay. But it didn't, yeah, didn't say very much, but. Do you like to gossip with your best friend? Uh, best, yeah, probably. Well, men every, every, gossip, every, so can't say I, Yeah, probably. I, I like a bit of gossip here and there. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever um, followed an embarrassing trend? Hairstyles, I've had loads of bad hairstyles, like pudding, pudding bowl and shaved chicken, like head. Yeah. Oh, I've had, I've had, I've had, at one point, I had my eyebrows shaved, I had lines in my head, I had like ginger tips, colored lenses, fake tattoo, I had like, when I was like 16, 17. My dad was very ashamed of me, probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have you ever re-gifted a gift? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Do you believe in aliens? I believe in life. I mean, it, scientifically speaking, there must be life outside of Earth because it's the, the odds of there not being life is, is low. So yeah. Okay. Do you ha uh, do you know what your zodiac sign is? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been arrested? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you believe in dating apps and Tinder? I personally can't go on them, um, but I I don't think they're bad. So it's, I mean they're. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, I think there's, it's, it fast tracks things because you find what people are like. It's like having a blind date, you don't know much about them. But if you have an app, you can filter ethnicity, age, yeah. interest. Can so, yeah. you know, I mean, people get catfished a lot on that. That's true, actually. You can't, <laughs> this is the thing, today's day and age, you can literally put a filter and then Photoshop, and you, you don't know what anyone looks like. You can use somebody else's picture. That's, actually, that has happened. I've had people sending me profiles thinking it's me of some guy with, with my photo on their dating profile. So that's happened a few times, but yeah. So if you see me on, on like Bill Mill or Tinder, it's not, it's not me, it's someone, it's someone else. Okay. I'm not on any, any app, so. <laughs> okay. Have you ever forgotten the lyrics to your own song on stage? Yes, a few times. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have reached the end of our segment. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch the latest episode. Thank you for watching and stay safe. Thank you.